Um, we have lots of people joining us, uh, not just from around the UK, but from other parts of the world as well. And I particularly want to uh, do a, a bit of a shout out to all those joining us from Germany and from the, ne the Netherlands, uh, if I can say it right. Uh, and uh, it's a great pleasure to have you, uh, both your nations with us here this evening. And um, we have live translation uh, in both your languages this evening, which is fantastic. So a great shout out to you, but a, a huge shout out to you no matter where you're from. It's delighted. We're delighted to have you with us here this evening. And if you haven't done so already, do put where you're from in the chat um, as well, so that we know uh, who we have with us. Um, it's wonderful to have so many people here. We have a fantastic uh, webinar lined up this evening with a cracking panel uh, of experts with us. So um, without further ado, I'm going to introduce our panel and then we'll have our opening prayer and then I'll hand over to our facilitator for this evening's conversation to get things underway. So first up, I'd love to introduce to you all Fatima Wesson. Fatima is the um, Global Director of Marketing and Communications for Alpha International. She's worked in marketing for a very long time, over 20 years. Uh, so she's a great person to have on uh, speaking with us this evening, sharing her expertise. She is married to Dave, and they've been married 18 years. They got married at HTB in London 18 years ago. Uh, they live in Camden in London, and they serve on the leadership team at St. Luke's Church in Kentish Town. They have three beautiful children, Grace, Caleb, and Ethan. And um, it's, it's a real pleasure to have Fatima uh, with us here this evening. Fatima, welcome. Great to have you with us. Next up, I'd like to introduce um, Father Joe, Father Joe Owusu Ansar, if uh, Father Joe is able to put his camera on so that you can see him too, because not only is he one of the most handsome priests that I know, but uh, Father Joe is an, uh, is an absolutely great, great guy. He's the parish priest at Holy Family Parish in Thanet in Kent, which is in the Archdiocese of Southwark. And uh, Father Joe has an, an immense passion for evangelization, for bringing people to know Jesus and to make them his disciples and form them as his disciples. And so we are really privileged to have Father Joe joining us this evening. So Father Joe, welcome. Great to have you with us. Next up, I'd love to introduce Catherine Fielding. Uh, Catherine is joining us all the way from Aberdeen in sunny Scotland this evening. Catherine is originally from Canada but uh, she's been living now in Scotland for a number of years. Uh, Catherine also has three children, uh, and she is the Alpha Coordinator at St. Mary's Cathedral in Aberdeen, where they've been running Alpha now for a number of years. And again, be great to have Catherine's expertise with us this evening. And uh, aside from all the stuff she does in her spare time with Alpha at the cathedral, she is also a full-time teacher at the International School in Aberdeen. So Catherine, lovely to have you with us, uh, and uh, can't wait to, to hear from you this evening. And last but not least is uh, Hannah Vaughan Spruce. Uh, many of you will have come across Hannah already, but if you haven't, Hannah is the Executive Director of Divine Renovation in the UK and is also one of my favorite people as well. So it's great to have such a great panel and Hannah is gonna be kind of hosting the conversation for us this evening. Um, so we are really looking forward to getting stuck in to that. Uh, just one final quick thing before we pray is just to say to you all, um, if you have any kind of questions or whatever for a little later on in the evening's webinar, pop those questions into the chat uh, as we go through the conversation. And a little later on, we'll try and pull out some of those questions just to get our panelists uh, kind of thinking on their feet a bit more a little later on in our conversation. So let's begin with uh, a prayer just to welcome the Lord's presence and to prepare us for this evening. So, Father in heaven, we thank you that you have gathered us all together here for this webinar this evening. And we ask you to send your Holy Spirit to come upon each one of us here on the panel and those joining this webinar. That you would fill us now with your love, with your grace, with your mercy. And you would stir in us something of the passion that you have within your heart for the evangelization of our nations. Help us to listen well and to learn well tonight, Lord. And may this conversation tonight be for your greater glory and for the coming of your kingdom. And we make our prayer in the name of Jesus, the Lord. Amen. 
Amen. Mike, thank you so much. And it is so good to be with everybody um, this evening from all around the UK and even further afield. Thank you everybody for joining. Um, the topic of our webinar, of our webinar uh, this evening is three ways to kill evangelization in your parish. And if you are joining us from a Catholic parish, um, you definitely don't want to kill evangelization in your parish because there's probably not much going on. Um, we've had 70 years um, plus of really explicit church teaching on evangelization and yet um, everyone who is involved in a Catholic parish knows how hard it is for that culture to change um, in our parishes and for us to be fruitful um, in this area. Often we see that evangelization can be really fruitful in forms outside of the parish, so we see this happening in movements, in other ministries and communities, but I think there's something about the culture of our Catholic parishes that often makes them pretty unevangelistic. We're, we're often the opposite of what we try to be. Um, and the culture often can work against the evangelization tools that we try to, to implement. Now, in our um, experience at Divine Renovation, we've seen that Alpha is the most effective tool that we've experienced in terms of parish evangelization. Um, and its power is not just as a tool, but precisely as something that can change the culture in the parish. And so this is what our focus is going to be on this evening, how we can use Alpha not just as a tool for evangelization. This is not just a program that we that one group operates in the parish. I and mean, it's just a side thing to all the other things. But how can it truly become an engine for culture change um, in the parish? Um, over the years, I've heard of, of many Catholic parishes that have used Alpha perhaps as a tool two or three times and they get a good number of parishioners coming. Um, and then perhaps the, the third or the fourth time they run it, they have maybe two people sign up. And then at that stage, they decide to give up and they say, well, we tried that. It didn't work. And, and, and we'll give up on that as, a, as an approach to evangelization in our parish. But... Um, we uh the way we see alpha be effective um is through really using it as a tool so today the conversation uh, um a tool to change culture so today our conversation is really going to be about how to do that in three ways um and so mike i'm going to throw back to you to start off this conversation i'd love to ask you um if you could outline these three ways that culture in our parish does kill evangelization. How does it how does it kill alpha just as we get going with it? Thanks, Hannah. It's a great question. And um one of the things that I've noticed over the, the last number of years as I've gone around the country, um so all four nations of the UK, and as I've spoken to people even from other parts of the world who've gone on this same journey uh, in Catholic parishes using Alpha as an evangelization tool is something like like you've identified. We've been doing this for a while. The guests have now diminished. We've got one old lady and a cat coming and we don't know why that is. We don't know what's got, what's wrong with that or we can't get, you know, whatever it is. So so obviously alpha doesn't work for us. So we're going to drop it and do something else. Um, and usually in those conversations um, with, with, with the, the, the folks I've spoken to, there's usually been kind of three, those three areas where something hasn't quite worked or a combination of the three um and that's usually been the reason why their their alpha hasn't worked well and their evangelization more broadly hasn't worked well hasn't really embedded as culture within the parish the first of those areas usually is around something to do with invitation how do we get people to come as guests on our alpha how do we get them how do we keep getting people to come as guests on our alpha you know common experience we started with 50 guests and now we've got three you know like three courses in how come other churches manage to get people coming all the time what is it that's happening there how do we invite people how do we get them to come in how do we encourage our congregation to invite people how do we how do we actually mobilize that usually there's a question around invitation in there somewhere how are we effectively mobilizing that the second area then normally comes out is something around leadership and developing your team is, you know, we just can't seem to build a sustained alpha team. We just can't seem to do it. We know the theory about the leadership pipeline, 
but in practice we've really struggled or people have left or you know whatever it might be how do we continue to raise up leaders how do we continue to empower them and keep them buying in so as they'll want to do alpha over the long term so that it does become a culture and isn't just a course that we run hmm. and the third area then i think is i mean they're all important but i think that this third area is absolutely crucial which is usually around the ministry of the holy spirit particularly that we would see on the alpha weekend or alpha day and the session that does god heal today and it's usually something around we know this is part of what Alpha does. We've kind of done your prayer training, but we're still not massively comfortable with it. We're still not massively used to it. I mean, we're Catholics. Do we even do this? Yes, we do, by the way. And, uh, you know, it's like, you know, um, how do we normalize this calling on the Holy Spirit to come and minister to people in the here and now? We just don't have the confidence to do it. So we've either watered it down slightly or we've cut it out altogether, in which case it has actually ceased to, to have the kind of the, the nuclear explosion at the heart of what it is that actually gives mm. life in the first place so it's normally in those kind of three areas that that we tend to see this is where the breakdown begins to happen wow thanks so much mike i'd love to i'd love people to chime in in the chat if you if any of this resonates with you like if you've experienced these three things in your own parish and um, so just to recap it's the um, invitational culture. We haven't been able to, to achieve a really invitational culture in our parish where we're inviting people along to Alpha. Um, secondly, it's building sustainable leadership around Alpha. So using it as a leadership pipeline. Um, and thirdly, um, the, the building the culture of the Holy Spirit in Alpha, using the Holy Spirit weekend um, specifically to allow people to have a powerful encounter with the Holy Spirit. Um, so if this sounds familiar to you, um, do share in the chat or even share other um, things that you've experienced as well that have been barriers for you. Um, so we're going to talk, first of all, about that first one, which is building effective invitation, bringing people to Alpha in the first place. Um, so Fatima, I'd just love to hear from you, your own experience, what you've seen work and um, how you would encourage churches um to build um a, an effective invitational culture thanks hannah thanks mike yeah i mean we've seen a lot and i i've actually got some slides that i thought it might be easier to visually give you some examples of things that we've seen that are working so if you bear with me let me just make sure i am presenting and then can you just tell me if you can see this um can you see yeah. that my awesome okay great yeah, perfect so i just wanted to start with a little bit of research that alpha uk did um about a year ago where there was so much gold in it but the one nugget i wanted to pull out today is that 56 percent of people who know what alpha is have never been invited and when we dig deeper into that i think what we're recognizing is the struggle of invitation the fear of being rejected that um, I don't know if you've encountered it I certainly have encountered it and in conversations that I've had with friends around um, why don't we invite more people to Alpha or to church to that event there's definitely a fear of people saying no and I think we need to recognize that so um, Alpha in the states have done a really interesting exercise that would look at what would happen if no wasn't feared and they've created a whole heap of assets around that and a, a training program really for churches in the States that I thought would be interesting to share with you around four weeks of mobilizing the church and just really identifying that um, potentially the fear of rejection is what is stopping uh, people from actually making that invitation. And how can we overcome it? How would we act differently if we weren't afraid of um, that no, mm -hmm. if we didn't invite someone to Alpha? And how can our churches look at addressing that issue? So in the States, they had a four week program where they would talk about it from the front and then they would surround that with prayer and it would be talked about in small groups. So it was really just um, identifying the issue and, and talking about it. And I love this quote. This is from um, a pastor 
uh, that says evangelism is simply joining the conversation that God is having with someone else. Mm -hmm. And I think if we reframe it that way, that's also super helpful. So some examples, I love this one, which um, I believe was from Alpha USA, but I have seen some examples of this in, in the UK. Who's your one? So rather than thinking about it in the big picture, like how I need to invite thousands of people to Alpha, who's the one person that God is laying on your heart? And this church has done this massive question, um, question mark that they have at the back of church and everyone just put a sticker on. When they had identified someone, they just put a sticker and it just keeps it front and center. And it's the action of um, taking the spiritual and the physical action that actually just makes it super easy to think about. I also love this. This is from our Amina team um, at a alpha um, gathering where they, this is a very innovative way of using a washing line. They had these little clothes pegs and everyone wrote down the name of someone that they were thinking or praying about inviting to alpha. And again, it's just identifying that one person and making it real. Um, this was a great example of a 21 day prayer campaign based on uh, Luke 11 2, where you write down the names of three people that you'd like to potentially invite and you set an alarm on your cal uh, on your phone for 1102 to just a, a very short reminder to pray for uh, those three people to invite um, over the next 21 days. And again, just really simple things that help um, people understand. And then just some examples of some of the campaign that the Alpha UK team uh, alongside Alpha Global have created for this uh, term of Alpha. Lo there's loads of assets that like we've um, created postcards, social media, 86% of the UK are on social media. That's where you can um, meet people where they already are. So um, social stories and social posts, all of this is available to you. We've tried to make it as super easy as possible um, to, for you to mobilize your congregation and utilize them. Um, and I think there's just something there about encouraging uh, you and your congregations to know that the biggest challenge is getting past the fear of rejection is also knowing that we we need to repeat these things multiple times. Like don't be afraid of over promoting your alpha course of talking about it too much from the front because it is a well-known thing that it takes seven to eight touches before it really sinks into our psyche. So there's no such thing as we spoke about it last week, we shouldn't speak about it again. Um, and also that word of mouth is the most powerful. So the power of invitation is crucial. Um, and yeah, hopefully these have sparked some ideas. Wow, that is such good stuff, Fatima, my goodness. I think just that quote um, stays with me, evangelism is joining in the conversation that God is having with, with somebody else. Um, and I know in my own parish, we're starting Alpha just next week. You know, it's that time of year, isn't it, when when um, parishes are, are starting. So we're all thinking about people we can invite. And what gives me courage is that, you know, God is already, like he's there before we're, we're inviting. He's already stirring in people's hearts. He He wants them there more than, more than we do. So uh, this is, this is just brilliant. Um, Father Joe, is this, yeah. what, what are you, what are you thinking as you're hearing yeah, that? So I know you're taking all, it all in. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Fatima, yeah. Thank you so much, Fatima. Um, I'm going to steal your, who is the one idea for my parish for our next alpha? Yes. I think that is brilliant. Yeah. Just wanted to add one that. thing to what you mentioned, Fatima, about personal invitation. That is so crucial. Um, but on top of that, what I would encourage is that learn to share your story. So simply, when you invite someone, tell them, where were you at before you did Alpha? What happened during Alpha? And where you are now after you've done Alpha? Share that story. Tell your testimony. And then um, that that will also really help and be impactful. Yeah, just wanted to add that. That's great. Having the testimonies at, at mass in the weeks beforehand, it's a great, great idea. Yeah, so good. I also heard of, a, of an example. This is from Father James Mallon, actually the author of Divine Renovation, um, his parish in, when he was at St. Benedict um, in Halifax. They would really celebrate the number of invitations so not celebrating the number of yeses but the number of people you invite um because you'll get more no's than yeses and um, but let's celebrate the number of people we invite 
and um, he he cooked dinner for the person in the parish who made the the highest number of invitations. <laughs> so if you're a priest, that's a great way to motivate your your you know you offer to cook dinner for the person who makes the highest number of invitations. Um, amazing. I would love to move on to this question of of leadership now and building a, a leadership pipeline. And I, I saw someone said in the chat that, yeah, this is an area that they struggle with in, in the parish, how to how to use Alpha to build the leadership pipeline and to really build it in a sustainable way so that people aren't being spread too thinly across the parish as you're trying to develop other ministries as well. Um, so, Catherine, I'd love to come to you and just ask about your own experience in in Aberdeen, how have you um, how have you built leadership pipeline in Alpha? That's great. Thanks, Hannah. Um, well, I think Alpha lends itself beautifully to the leadership pipeline. Um, I guess I'm a product of that pipeline uh, because I've come through it as a guest and um, then came back on team and and built my way up there. So, uh, with our team here in Aberdeen, we normally Around week seven, our team have start noticing in our guests those who would be uh, good leaders to invite back on our team. And it used to be that I would have to start um, suggesting to them to start having to think about who do you think would be good on our team? Who do you think would be good to come back on our team? But it's become so much a part of the culture of our alpha team now that they actually, I don't even have to remind them anymore. They get so excited about meeting guests on our team that they say, Catherine, there's this great person on our team who I think we should uh, think of inviting. And they're, so they're already thinking about that before I have to initiate um, any of it. And it's that excitement that they get about that, about, oh my goodness, this person would be wonderful on our alpha team. Um, and how does, uh, how do, how do, so how do we invest in them? Um, you were talking about Father James and uh, I was just looking at one of his little videos and he said um, that if fed, immature disciples become mature disciples. So I guess that's crucial to how we develop the leaders on our Alpha team is to how do we feed them? How do we invest in them and how do we support them? And they're so, you know, if, if we just ignore them and just, um, carry on then 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 they they go away they don't feel fed they don't feel nurtured they don't feel supported so so how do we do that um is the big question you know we we um our training our alpha training for our team is always regardless of how many times you've done alpha um it's always mandatory for people to do you know because uh, we always learn something again and again each time we do it um with our uh, with our team, <clears throat> we also have pre-team meetings and post-team meetings uh, at every session. We come together, we pray as a team, we start developing as a community, um, we pray for our guests, we um, and and that happens at every single alpha and our post-team meeting, and that starts to develop us as a team, and we start getting to know each other. Um, and then throughout Alpha, as we go, as, as, as our team come in as helpers, they are the silent ones. So they're developing even by not speaking, they're, they're, they're disciplining themselves not to make it the focus of themselves. The focus is creating that environment for our guests. Um, and so they really, it takes, that's probably the hardest thing our team learns is how to do that and to step back and to not speak to just be silent helpers but to learn to serve to learn hospitality to learn all those other things we can do um whilst creating that space for our our, uh, our guests to thrive and then they move on to host which uh develops them even further it develops them um into how to manage the the team and we know that no alpha is the same none are the same and each alpha small group is is different scenarios so our hosts in those situations have to manage all sorts of different things that are happening um you know we have have team coming in who have never prayed out loud before and by the end 
because we do it uh, as a matter of course in our team meetings, to start our team meeting and to end our team meeting, they start to learn to do that organically. Um, and it just becomes a natural part of, of what they do, uh, as well as our guests learning that on team. Um, yeah, so those are a few ways that we invest in them um, and constantly investing in them, constantly affirming what they do, you know, appreciating them. Um, at the end of our alpha session, I always have a big do here at my house, cook dinner and invite them all over and serve them. They've spent this whole time on alpha serving others. So I invite them over and serve them, give them a bit of that hospitality that they've so generously given you know, throughout those 11 weeks. And I try to constantly affirm what they give to people and the manner in which they give it. It's, it's just amazing. You know, it just amazes me each time the, the time and dedication that they give to the guests and the love that they pour out into the guests, you know. Um, and this, there's this one quote that that I got actually from one of our, uh, my last alpha session that I went to down at HTB. Um, and it says the things that the priest is passionate about will be reflected in the parish. And that's true, our, our priest, Father Keith, is, is so passionate about alpha and that's reflected in the parish. That's reflected in me. I'm hugely par uh, passionate about alpha. And that also, hopefully, my passion for that is reflected in our team. So hopefully through that, that passion that we then pass on and instill in them is, um, helps them to grow as leaders. Once they, they learn all that, they then go off into different areas of the, the parish healing ministry, leading their own small groups. Um, there's so many different areas they can then move on to within the parish and do. And you've seen someone enter Alpha not even being able to, or, or comfortable, feeling comfortable to pray out loud and leaving, you know, after a year, after two years, maybe after three years they've spent on Alpha, being able to do all of those things, leading small groups and 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 being comfortable with it. It's become part of their DNA and, and yeah. the DNA more so of our parish. Yeah. Wow. That's lovely, Catherine. I love, I love what you're talking about in terms of building people's confidence, you know, just people's confidence growing um in leadership um and it just strikes me as well it relates to perhaps a comment that's that's been shared in the chat there about people are not confident to invite and I think actually these these two things go together don't they because once you grow in confidence mm -hmm. in leadership you know that you're going to invite someone to something that they'll have a good experience you know you grow in confidence of invitation as well so it's it's wonderful um Mike, any other thoughts from you about about leadership in particular and pra practical things you've you've seen parishes do to build the leadership pipeline? I think one thing that I would say that I that I would say to parishes whenever I talk to them as well when they when they do hit one of these walls is I also say to them I, I often kind of take it back to several things. One is is vision. What's your overarching vision for Alpha in the parish? Yes. And if you, it was an old trick I learned when I was doing teacher training many years ago. Uh, back in the stone age um, was was called the five whys you ask yourself the question why five times and you'll get to the root of your problem you know uh, our alpha team has, has dried up why well because we've not invested in them whatever you know okay and in a sense in a sense that's straight away that's your answer but if you if you keep looking back it's often there's often a vision casting issue that lies behind it and we've not ignited people's hearts or their sense of confidence the sense that they can do it whatever but the other thing i'd also say is even more practically is I often say to parishes, don't kill yourselves trying to get a million people on your alpha, right? If you're in, you know, St. Botolph's Parish out in the middle of the Fens somewhere, it's not going to be the same as HTB, which is in a massive urban centre, okay? So don't compare yourselves to others. Even if you have one alpha small group, if you do that one small group really well, and each time you run alpha, you have one small group with brand new guests in it each time, <laughs> you are winning. Because that, even if it's eight guests, mm. that's eight guests who don't normally go to church that you would not have reached otherwise. Yeah. So work with what you've got and and pray like mad into it as well, because God, God can open doors. So that, that would just be my things there. So good. So good. 
I, I wonder if I could just add on to what Mike was just saying there. I love it when Nikki shares um, about how he's been disappointed at his alphas. And I think it's always yes. great to hear it directly from Nikki, who obviously, you know, knows how to run alpha. He knows all of the best practices, but sometimes the same thing has happened to him. He started with 15 people. He's ended with three. And it's just about knowing that God ordained those three to be there. You know, God still has a plan. There's no failure in Alpha. We learn with each one. We enjoy it um, and not to get discouraged. And I think just sharing that with the team so that they don't feel discouraged. I find I definitely find that encouraging when we're running Alpha at our church. That's so true. That's so true. Can I make two quick points, please? And um yeah, Catherine let's talk about the role of the priest, and he's given an example of his own priest being passionate about Alpha and that reflecting um in what he does. There's something I learned in a divine renovation web webinar, and whoever was speaking said that what is important, you don't just announce it as one other thing in the notices for the parish. What is important, you actually preach it. And I think if Alpha is going to be a key evangelization tool in our parishes, then it's not just a notice at the end of Mass. If even it's mentioned at the end of Mass to be preached, you know, it's shared as part of a bigger vision to bring people to encounter Jesus Christ. So how you package it to sell it to the people is vital, especially also on the part of the leader, um, i.e. the priests. That's my first point. My second point, um, one Father Garrett has put in the chat about quite a disappointing statistics about Catholics' willingness to invite people. And I think that also comes back to the whole point of evangelization, the primacy of evangelization. If people are converted to Jesus Christ, they will want others to encounter Jesus Christ. There's a, there's a, um, a quote attributed to um, Pope Benedict the Sistine that you cannot love Jesus and no one others to love him. Or you cannot love Jesus and invite others to love him. I, just before our time, I was reading Evangelii Gaudium and I came across this, this quote in Evangelii Evangelii Gaudium by Pope, um, Pope Francis. He says, every Christian is a missionary to the extent that he or she has encountered the love of God in Jesus Christ. We no longer say that we are disciples and missionaries, but rather we are always missionary disciples. So the extent that we've encountered the love of God in Christ is that same extent that we want to invite others to also have this encounter of the love of God in our Lord Jesus Christ. Here's the primacy of evangelization. So we should also target people in our pews. And I think if people in our pews are converted, please go through tools like Alpha, there will be a, the willingness to invite. In fact, one of the most impactful Alpha sessions I had, amazing conversions from people who have never knocked doors on the, on the church before. And it was solely because the leaders, the parish leaders I work with, had been fired up, encountered Christ in a deeper way, and they wanted their friends who didn't know, know Christ to want to experience that. And they invited them. And for the first time in an Alpha, we're having people who have never been to church, who've never experienced Christianity, and they have been converted to Christ. Mm -hmm. So this of evangelization is vital um, as far as invitation is concerned. Thank you. So good. So good. This is great stuff. Um, I would I would love to encourage um you to to put questions in the chat. So if you have particular questions that you would put to, to any of the of the panelists here, to Fatima, Catherine, Mike, Father Joe, um, just, just pop them in the chat then. We'll have a moment for, for asking some questions in a moment. Um, I want to go to that third, um, the third way that we can kill evangelization in our parish. And this is by skipping the Holy Spirit. <laughs> this is the most important. So, um, Alpha is not Alpha without the Holy Spirit weekend. And sometimes I think um, we can think, uh, you know, that's quite a lot to undertake. We'll just skip that bit because 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 that's the bit that's it's a little bit too it's a little bit too much um, to to put on. Um, but yeah, Al Alpha is not Alpha without it. Um, so Father Joe, I'd love to come back to you and, and perhaps if you would share a little bit about how you've integrated 
this this culture of the Holy Spirit through Alpha into your parish because this is this is new for many Catholic parishes. It's new and it can be a little bit kind of intimidating as well. Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, um, the, the I did one Youth Alpha and I didn't do the Holy Spirit weekend and I I felt that something was amiss actually. When we started, it was thriving and then COVID hit and then eventually we shifted it online. And then we finished online and I thought, oh, it's complex. We didn't do the Holy Spirit weekend. And up to today, I feel there was a huge part of it missing. First of all, I'll encourage that I never miss the Holy Spirit weekend or day. You may want to do it in a day, not an entire weekend. It's fine. But do not skip it. It's so vital. Two things I want to mention about the Holy Spirit to encourage you as far as the Holy Spirit Day or Holy Spirit Weekend is concerned. First of all, we should have faith that the Holy Spirit indeed comes and touches people and transforms lives. To have that trust that the Holy Spirit will do it, that he's faithful, that he always comes, that he desires the conversion of people that you do, so he will come. To, to, to have that faith that he will do it. But maybe also we fear, there's also a sense of fear, it's like, oh, wow, what if the Holy Spirit comes and I'm not sure what is going to happen to me or the person I'm praying for. And so we are a bit hesitant. If you've done the Alpha, um, one of the Holy Spirit videos, now Cardinal Renero Cantalamesa speaks, the, the, the preacher to the paper household. And he said that the Holy Spirit is the comforter. So why will you be afraid of the comforter? You know, he comes and he, he's gentle and he's the comforter. So you invoke him, he will come and it won't be an awkward moment. It will be one of joy. Every Holy Spirit day we pass since I've run out for this, has have melted, has have broken. And actually for some people, it is where the turn and around happens, where that conversion, that change of heart happens. So go for it, prepare well for it, pray beforehand with it. One practical thing I've always realized that music is very helpful. Get a music ministry, if even it's just one person with a guitar, gently leading some, some, some Holy Spirit songs. It, it creates a very nice environment. It creates the disposition for people um, for that to happen. So please go for it. Trust that the Holy Spirit will do his own work and he is gentle and he will do it. Again, uh, my brother, priest, pastors, I was, I was in a conversation with some priests, and um, one said that the priest in the area, perhaps a deanery, organized a vigil um, before Holy, before um, Pentecost Sunday. And the priest was leading it, encouraged people to pray with one another. And he said he turned around, and all the priests there were, like, were sitting idle. And it's like, you are meant to give examples of praying with one another. So let's give the people the, that gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is very much at the heart of our faith as, as Catholics. Think about baptism, think about confirmation. Let's, let's go with faith, try that the Holy Spirit will do it, and the Holy Spirit will come in his gentleness, and he, the comforter, will transform lives. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Father Joe. <laughs> Do you know what? It reminds me. So I, I led my first ever um, Holy Spirit weekend during an Alpha course, probably about six or seven years ago and it was new to me and I just remember the whole of the Saturday afternoon and um, just being so nervous because I just thought is the Holy Spirit going to come is anyone going to be touched is anything going to change um, and and I think one of the things I was nervous about was because you know as Catholics we normally have lots of religious props right so it's like okay we'll pray the rosary or we'll, we'll just have adoration. Everyone can just pray in adoration. And all those things are, are powerful and wonderful things. But when you just pray for the Holy Spirit, you're just, you know, you're just waiting on God to see what God will do. Um, and it was incredible because that evening it was very simple. We just prayed, come Holy Spirit. We waited and people, people were beautifully um, touched and impacted by the Lord. I didn't know too much that night, but next morning at breakfast, um, some of the people who spoke to me, people who were unbaptized and they'd had just beautiful encounters with the Lord. And from that evening onwards, um, I, I was just never afraid again. I knew that the Holy Spirit always comes when we invite him. Always. We don't need to lean on our normal props or, or, or things that we've become accustomed to. 
But I'm going to throw it to you now, Mike, because you might have more to say on this and, and also perhaps to go to some of the questions um, in the chat. Yeah, thanks, Hannah. Thanks, Father Joe. Um, do you think it'd be OK if we cloned Father Joe? And we, would that would that be within the limits of the church's teaching? I'm not sure. I think if we, we could multiply you across the country, we change we change the world. Um, so by location. <laughs> by location. That, that's the that's the holier way to do it. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, by location. Um, I would probably say, yeah. I mean, for me, this is the area. I think, and the thing that always makes me kind of laugh about this is that actually this particular way of calling on the Holy Spirit to come and to make his presence felt to us in whatever way that looks like is the most profoundly Catholic thing. It's deeply rooted in the Catholic tradition. I mean, as, as I often say to parishes, on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit broke loose, who was there? It was Our Lady and the Apostles. You can't get more Catholic than that. And if it was good enough for Our Lady and the Apostles, then it's good enough for me and should be good enough for us in our parishes. And we just need to relearn actually this is a key part of our heritage and thanks be to god that many of our brothers and sisters in the other christian communities have been really kind of focusing in on this and they have been helping us to relearn how to do this and giving us practical models so that's the first thing that i'd say to that um i suppose the other thing is just um just reiterating what father joe said is don't miss out the prayer ministry time on your alpha weekend make sure you train your team every time uh, you've got the training videos, the team training videos that you get through the Alpha website. Use those. Um, if you're still really kind of battling with it, get in touch with me. If you're in the UK, get in touch with me. And if you're from another country, we will put you in touch with your Alpha office because we want to equip you to, to be more confident doing this because this is the thing that makes the difference. Um, without without us calling on the spirit to come and impact Can people's lives and reveal Jesus in, to Hannah, them. That, that what Nikki says about the Holy Spirit. We... Oh, Catherine's just sort of broken up a bit there. Oh, I think we might have lost her there for a moment. Um, so sorry, Catherine, excuse me if, I, if, if I'm carrying on. But yeah, with, with, without this element, then um, as you said, it, it's not alpha. And uh, and again, just in response to what one of the points in the in the chat that someone mentioned about, you know, we need to be careful that we're not just doing, say, alpha for, for the sake of doing alpha or whatever. And I'd say absolutely. Alpha is not the answer. Jesus is the answer. But alpha is a tool that Jesus seems to be using quite powerfully to draw people to himself at, that, at this time. That's why we want to give it to you. And that's why we, we would encourage you to use it again and again as a tool to draw people to him. And that Holy Spirit ministry part uh, is the heart of it is absolutely key. So so d don't be afraid and know that you're well rooted in the tradition. And there's plenty of church teaching on it as well. Uh, and if you want to give me a ring, we can talk further about that in more detail. Uh, some of the um, questions that have come out in the chat, a great question from um, I think it was from, from Father Gareth was about how to inspire your team if your team haven't had that kind of experience themselves you know is it is it necessary for them to experience alpha first and then you can launch properly with them fired up what what would your kind of thoughts be on that um father joe fatima and catherine well is that um i didn't see the question that he wrote but is is he's saying that the team haven't experienced alpha as a guest Yes, and maybe that they don't have quite the same kind of vision or, or fervor for the invitation, the leadership and the ministry of the spirit stuff. So, okay. so how do you generate would, that in them? I would almost run an alpha, a small group alpha just for the team, just to um, do it just for them and, and, and then work from there. And then they will have experienced the whole process from start to end. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then launch out after that to so uh, form the team like that, get them very confident and uh, enthusiastic and experiencing what the Holy Spirit weekend is all about. And then um, inspired and hopefully full of the Holy Spirit. And then they're launched into into. And I just wanted to say that that um, Nikki Gumbel often says that that's how important the Holy Spirit weekend is, is that it's the Holy Spirit, Alpha is the Holy Spirit weekend surrounded by 11 sessions. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Catherine. 
Yeah, I did um alpha first for my team actually, and in fact, the first team I did run alpha for, they actually became my parish leadership team. I realized that when Alpha was unfolding, they were already. I remember when we did the session on 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 the Bible. One of the one of them was saying, "Oh, I want to tell everyone to read the Bible. I want to tell everyone now to read the Bible." So already that or you know they're going through it sparks a desire in them for them to share. So I think that that is very helpful. And also when they do it, it also gets them to chill. By the time we finish Alpha, the team will have really chill. They built really strong friendships. They loved each other. And so they were ready to take on, take the mantle on and, and run it for other people as well. So I find that, I find that helpful. Um, and then the only other thing I was going to add is that in our church, the way that we have done it is we run Alpha as a church once a year, something like that. Um, and then every time we have new people joining the church, we ask them to do Alpha in the next season and the next term so that everyone, um, uh, understands the importance of alpha to our church and our, ch our vicar explains it that it's the I think he says it's the operating model it's like the core of who we are as a church we want to be an invitational church we want to um, be inviting our community to alpha and that's the way that we've been able to embed it in our culture great thank you thank you all um, I think the same father James Mallon says calls it the pump doesn't he yes yes that's right that's right yeah so uh, to see alpha as the operating system rather than as an app to, to put it that way yeah that's the way to to look at it um another quick question from the from the chat here um was just in terms of how how do i start in my parish which clearly needs an evangelizing kind of missional impulse but they've never done alpha but feel that the holy spirit is nudging me to open it out um you've kind of touched on that a little bit, but maybe just a little bit more of the nuts and bolts about how would somebody maybe get started? How would they, how would they help encourage their, their parish towards that? That's open to anybody. Um, so maybe let me share my brother's story here. It might be helpful actually. So when I, when I was first appointed to my parish, I, I had a vision to kind of use the parish as a tool for evangelizing, to form, basically, the, the vision was to form missionary disciples. And I decided that the main tool I would use is Alpha. Now, that was just after the lockdown, after the first lockdown. There were only 50 people coming to Mass at that point. So I basically approached people. Anyone within the 50 I thought was below the age of 60, I just invited them and then run Alpha for them. If I would even go straight into Alpha because I wanted them to get comfortable with each other a bit more. So we started talking about the book Rediscover Jesus by Ma Matthew Kelly. And then as soon as that ended, we um, I rolled in Alpha. And that was a very good impetus to begin with. You know, with a church of 50, about 11 people doing Alpha, that was quite a big percentage of the 50 attendance. So already, they will start talking to the others about it. They'll begin to permeate into the congregation. And that was a good starter. But maybe your, your scenario, your context might be different. But with the context I found myself, I thought that was a good way in. But as Mike also said, let there be a vision. You know, let there be a vision. What direction are we going? And then you can drive that using Alpha as a tool. Maybe just one final little uh, thing, uh, another kind of question that, that's linked into that, maybe just from the other side of the fence. From yeah, I, would, I was somewhere on Alpha, find an Alpha, because I think that's a prerequisite for our Alpha. I think we're losing Catherine's, Catherine's Wi-Fi there in, in and out. Sorry, Catherine. Um, I, Sorry, all, all, you... all, I, all I was going to say there was that, um, just, <laughs> just from the other side of the fence, very briefly, was what if you're a lay person? Or you're a group of lay people in your parish, and your priest isn't quite leading that. What might be some ways of encouraging them? How can they have that conversation with the parish priest to begin looking at, at this kind of thing? Any, any thoughts on that briefly before we move into the next section? 
Well, I love one of the comments, which is first pray for your priest, second pray for your priest. Um, yes, prayer is definitely key. Uh, the other thing that I would suggest is we, we talked about the power of stories and the power of um, understanding what Alpha is actually like and what it can do for a parish. So maybe connecting your priest in with other priests that have run Alpha to just understand what the objections are, what the priest may be worried about. I think sometimes just a, a simple conversation could uh, could suffice as well. Fantastic, thanks. For that. As well, the Alpha open days are very good, aren't they? The, uh, can you hear me? Yes, we got you, oh, yeah. Catherine. The Alpha Open Days that are uh, happening around the UK that Alpha UK put on would be a fantastic uh, exposure to what it's all about, the come and see, you know, no risk, nothing nothing ventured, nothing gained, right? Yeah, absolutely. Just one other thing to add is loop them in with Mike because Mike would be able to also answer any of their questions and give them a, a a very balanced view of what it is like to um, run Alpha. It's good stuff. Thanks, Fatima. That's true. Actually, that, that's that's what I'm here for. Actually, connected to that, Mike was the one who converted me to Alpha. Yeah. At the yeah. Renovation Conference in Twickenham in 2017, I think. <laughs> you did a workshop for a seminar on Alpha on the side, and you spoke so passionately about it, and I thought, I'm going to do that. That, like, what everything about that sounds good and true and beautiful and then I was, I was then an assistant priest so i got a permission from my parish priest to run it for youth and that's how it all started yeah so point them to mark mike good stuff i'll i'll, 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 have, to, I'll have to get father joe to, to write to my boss and see if i can get a raise off the back of that that's fantastic <laughs> it won't be fantastic well folks listen um, I'm, I'm aware of the time and uh, I, I think it, that's been great um, that, that we, we've we've gone through an awful lot of the stuff that was in the chat and you shared such gold. And we could be here for hours, honestly. I could be listening to the wisdom from the three of you for hours. Um, but I'd love just to hand over to, to Hannah now, maybe just to lead us in a, in a short time of prayer before we close up for the evening. Thank you so much, everybody. We've We've said all along that the Holy Spirit is the power behind Alpha. There is no Alpha without the Holy Spirit. Um, and so we're going to really live this out now. And, and um, this is this is the, in some ways might be the most important moment of the of the whole webinar. So do stay on. Um, and and we're just going to invite him um, to come now. So I just invite you to get into a, um, a posture of prayer somewhere you're comfortable and um, just open our hands. If that's if that's comfortable and we pray, come Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we thank you. Thank you for coming upon each one of us right now. Thank you for filling us. Thank you for refreshing us. Thank you for coming whenever we call upon you that you're so faithful, that you're there even before we call. Lord, we lift up to you every single church, every single parish that is represented on this webinar. We lift up to you the, the hopes and the dreams of every person who wants to begin running Alpha or who wants their Alpha to be um, even more impactful, even more powerful. Holy Spirit, come and pour yourself out upon every single Alpha that is planned um, for this term and for every single one that is dreamed of in, in each of the Catholic parishes here. We pray for each person who will receive an invitation, each person who will come to the first night, each person who will um, think about coming. Lord, you want to see renewal in our church and you want to see uh, new life being poured out in this land through our churches. So come and refresh our churches right now. And we praise you, Lord. All glory be to the Father, 
and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, I would love to share with everybody here um, some things that are coming up, which you should not miss. Um, so do hang on. One of the things um, that we want to say as, as we come to a close is that um, through Divine Renovation, if you're a priest, we would love um, to offer an opportunity to book a call with one of our regional guides because we can support you in the renewal of your parish so just click on, on the link there, divinerenovation.org slash regions, and you can easily book a call with us. If you're not a priest, if you're a lay person in a parish and you just want to get started learning more about divine renovation, um, we've got this wonderful guide, which you can download for free from our website, the three keys to unlocking your parish. This is a study guide and the link is there in the chat um, as well. Um, and finally, we know there are so many stories that people have been sharing, all kinds of experiences that people have um, shared in the chat here. So we have um, an opportunity as well for you to share um, your story with us um, using these different channels. We've got some events coming up um, and we're going to put each of these events um, in the in the chat as well so that you can click onto them. The first one is Renewal Night. This is coming to Wakefield. So if you're in the north, um, of England on Friday the 13th of October. In fact, if you're anywhere near um, St. George's um, Church in Wakefield, make sure you're here Friday the 13th of October, 7 p.m. Um, we're going to have this phenomenally powerful night in the Holy Spirit. So come and be refreshed, renewed. This is an evening of worship, of prayer and of teaching hosted by Divine Renovation. Max Ford will be speaking. There'll be worship um, and there'll even be children's program going on. So you can come with your children as well. Um, the following day, we have an event for um, parishes that we're coaching in, um, in again, in the same place in Wakefield, Saturday, the 14th of October. So if you are being coached by Divine Renovation, this event is for you. Come and meet other parishes that are also being coached and we have a wonderful day planned for you. Um, in Aberdeen and Runcorn, um, this uh, coming up, we have Run Alpha. So we're, 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 there's a lot going on in the north. So if you're in the north or in Scotland and Aberdeen, there's, there's things going on for you. So um, Run Alpha is designed to give you the opportunity to experience sample alpha sessions, discover how it works in a Catholic parish setting, hear from other parishes already running Alpha and answer, have your, all your questions answered. So Aberdeen is on Saturday the 23rd of September and Runcorn is Saturday the 21st of October. We will put all of this in an email to you um, as well. So don't, don't worry too much about writing all of this down. Um, and finally, there's an event coming up in Germany. So if you are here joining from Germany, make sure you come to this event. This is an open house event in Gelsenkirchen. Have I said that right? I hope I've said that right. Um, the 4th of November, Dan O'Rourke, who is the president of Divine Renovation, will be there in person and he will be speaking at that event. So come and see what Divine Renovation looks like in a parish um, in Germany. This is the open house event. Um, and finally, if you have been um, blessed by divine renovation um, we would love you to prayerfully consider making a donation to our ministry everything that we offer for parishes is offered um, completely free of charge um, and it will always be that case that that way um, but we would love to invite you to consider to make a donation to the ministry so that we can continue supporting the parishes and coaching parishes in the way that we do it has been wonderful to be with all of you thank you so much for joining um, we love walking alongside you. Stay in touch with us and we will see you at our next event soon. God bless you and good night.